Warning, this podcast is known to contain fuck by the state of California. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by IP Vanish, Stamps.com, All Birds, and by Tuna Sandwiches from Subway Sandwiches. You paid $5, never mind what the fuck it is. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hello, fellow secularists. It is I, Floon Puff, crown prince of Ethiopia. Here to tell you that we did, in fact, magically evolve from filthy monkey men. It's Thursday. It's June 24th. And it's midsummer. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. No, it's not. But feel free to murder your shitty boyfriend anyway. Absolutely. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. Don't really murder. That was a joke. And from Geraldo Rivera's New Jersey and Geraldo Rivera's Ohio, this <laughs> is the scathing atheist. He's living to. Oh, this place. week's episode. The Supreme Court rules that there are separate but equal kinds of parents. Ted Cruz performs the saddest one-man show in the history of theater. <laughs> and we'll tell you just how bullshit some bullshit is. But first, the Elia tribe. No, new atheism has not merged with the far right. And I, I just want to say, if you're thinking to yourself, what? Of course it hasn't merged with the far right. What the fuck are you talking about? I envy your inbox because as sure as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, someone has once again written an article making just that claim in Salon Magazine. And no less than 30 people emailed us about it. So rather than talking about something fun, once again, I got to explain just how wrong and insulting that headline is. So let's begin with the term new atheism. Now, the author of the article is defining new atheism as those four guys who wrote books that were relatively popular in 2004, and also a few jerks who had nothing to do with the atheist movement, but they prove his point, so them too. And even if you accept that bullshit definition, no, they haven't merged with the alt-right. Look, a few of them are assholes, wrong about important questions of social justice for sure, but they haven't merged with the far right. And that's the fucking headline, merged with the far right. You know who's merged with the far right? Evangelical Christians. Those assholes in Charlottesville chanting Jews will not replace us? Christians. Politicians writing bills and making it illegal to teach critical race theory, stripping people of voting rights, defending the rights of cops to murder unarmed black men in the street. Christians, the Braveheart cosplayers who tried to overthrow the government in January, so Christian that they Facebook lived their prayer circle to Jesus. That's who the far right are. And that's what they're doing in this country. You don't get to scale the meaning of far right back to interviewed a racist on their podcast when it's convenient for your dialogue. And it's not a defense of those authors to point that out. It's a defense of the English language. Most people who read that article aren't going to read the words new atheists and think of four authors and a couple of jerks. They're going to think of atheists who are new. Again, because, you know, of how words work. Like, if I said new music these days sucks or I don't enjoy any new movies. Would you intuit that I meant the four best-selling CDs of 2004? Of course not. You'd think I meant the movie makers of today in general. And since that's the claim that a lot of people are going to read, let's break that one down. Is the new atheist movement merged with the far right? Let's, let's start at home. Maybe the author means podcasters. So let me check out the top of the atheist charts for that one. Uh, nope, that's Hemet. Tom and Cecil, Seth, Thomas, us, and Ono, Ross, and Carrie. So unless Carrie went too deep in a KKK meeting and never came back, no. And, and yes, Sam Harris has a podcast with an audience that dwarfs ours. But you notice that it's not a podcast about atheism. It's not in the atheism category. 
and he doesn't talk about atheism on it. And that's not a coincidence because when Sam did start talking out of his ass, the atheist community is where his pushback came from. He turned to the Joe Rogan explicitly not skeptical alpha brain pill taking audience for a reason because the atheist community wouldn't have him anymore. So maybe he means convention organizers, right? Like that would be a fairly convincing argument if atheist conventions were populated by far right speakers and advocates. Well, luckily for me, we've been to the largest atheist conventions in the world over the last couple of years. So let's run through that list. Um, AA con, no. Nano con, no. Skepticon, mm-mm. Ooh, maybe the author means the largest skeptical convention in the world, QED, run by our dear friends, Marsh and Andy, who work countless hours for less pay than they could make selling hot peanuts on the streets of London to ensure that their convention is safe and welcoming, who put in countless safety measures to make people feel comfortable and loved. Sure as fuck ain't them. Are you picking up why I'm pissed off yet? Look, these people might not be who the author of the article meant, but it's who they fucking smeared and they don't deserve it. Maybe it's the blogs, Hemet again, PZ Myers, or the activists, Nick Fish, Jeff Blackwell, Allison Gill, Andrew Seidel. No, 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 and no. So who does that leave us? Well, that leaves us you, doesn't it? That's the only other kind of new atheist I can think of. Atheists as a demographic. But we've got some data on you. It's actually kind of our job to report on this kind of thing. And survey after survey after study says that you tend to be among, if not the most liberal, accepting, pro-gay marriage, pro-trans rights, religious demographic. You're the least likely to believe in far-right conspiracy theories. Hell, you're even least likely to watch Fox News. So what the fuck is this author talking about? Assholes on Twitter? I mean, can you think of any other social justice movement that we judge on the merit of its YouTubers, let alone a religious denomination? Hello, Salon Magazine? Hold the presses. Yes, the article is called How Jews Merged with the Far Right because Ben Shapiro exists. Because social justice is what atheism is. I mean, yes, it is also the answer to the world's easiest philosophical question. And it's a religious demographic because everybody's got to fill in a bubble on the survey, but Once you got that out of the way, the mission of atheism as a movement is social justice. It's stopping evil at its root. It's taking away where it gets all its fucking money. Because religion is where the far right actually gets its money. Religion is how they get their laws passed. Religion is what's merged with the far right. In effect, so obvious that if the title of that article had been Religion Has Merged With The Far Right the body of the article would have had to have been, duh. Because you know what this article is? It's an excuse. It's an excuse to sit back and do nothing till the perfect movement comes along. Then, then when there are no assholes, when there are no real disagreements, that's when I'm really going to roll up my sleeves and do something. You guys keep fighting the good fight. Keep trying to fight back the tide of theocracy. I'll be here in the back telling everyone what assholes you are, but just as soon as the movement's perfect, count me in. So why am I mentioning it? Why not just ignore it and let it go away? Because non-existent God knows it will. Well, because I believe in this movement. I'm honored to be a part of it, however small. And look, I, I know we're not a big part. I know that I won't even be a footnote in the history of the atheist movement, but I've been lucky enough to witness parts of it. When the history books look back on the people who did lead our movement, at the very least, I'll be able to say, hey, I was there. I even got to do the diatribe while they were getting their dental work done. I did my best to help. I cheered as loud as I could from the cheap seats, and I won't let that be ruined by so-called critics from the outside any more than I'll let it be defined by the jerks on the inside. I hope you won't either. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight is the Oscar to my Felix, Eli Bosnick. Eli, are you ready to severely trigger my OCD, I guess? Uh, sure. There you go. Ugh, okay. <laughs> I don't even know why I ask. For the listeners at home, Eli just put a comment in our Google document. So now everything is aligned to the left and not centered. It won't center, uh, and I also hate him. 
Yeah. And it doesn't go back until I delete my comments. So I need you to delete it, please, mm-hmm. right now. No, do the podcast. Okay, well, while I wrestle his laptop out of his hands, we're going to take a quick break <laughs> for a word from our sponsor, IP Vanish. All right, Eli, you ready to do the IP Vanish ad? Oof, I sure am, Heath. I've been waiting for years for a product like this one to sponsor our show. Okay, great. Love the enthusiasm. So go for it. All right. Hey, podcast listener. Do you love urine-based pranks but hate the drag nice. of covering up your crimes? Well, then check out IP no, no, Vanish. No, no, no. no. What, what are you doing right now? IP Vanish is a virtual private network. What's a virtual private network? It's a super important tool that helps you safely browse the internet. You can use a VPN on your computers, tablets, phones, even things like your Fire Stick when you're streaming media. When you use a VPN, all your data is encrypted. That's what that is. Oh, so so you're saying IP Vanish isn't a special solvent that makes it easier to clean nope, nope. urine-based pranks? Nope. No, it is not. It is not any of that. Oh, man. I bought so much urine online, though, Heath. I spent so much money. I... <sighs> Well, uh, good luck with that. I don't know. Keep the receipt. So for listeners of the show, IP Vanish is offering an incredible 65% off. Just $3.49 for the first month or $31.49 for the year. I mean, that sounds like a great price, Heath, but I went into debt for the amount of urine I bought. I mean, I made promises I cannot keep for that urine. Just go to IPVanish.com slash scathing and claim your 65% savings. They have plans starting at just three forty nine or thirty one forty nine a year. This is the time to sign up. With our discount and their current promotion, you can get a VPN for sixty five percent off their usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best, even rated four point seven out of five on Trustpilot, and that's with more than six thousand reviews. So let's show these guys some love. They're repeat sponsors. Remember, it's ipvanish dot com slash scathing to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. IP Vanish. It has. Nothing to do with urine, just good internet service. I gotta make a call. Okay, yeah, make a call. And now, back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, Heath bit me. <laughs> I did. In our, he did. He did. But now the it. page is centered again. So, you know, you decide, listener. It is centered. Also, in our co-lead story tonight, the Supreme Court of the United States <laughs> ruled unanimously last week that not only can Catholic foster care agencies deny kids to gay people, it's illegal for the city of Philadelphia to deny them money as a result. Ugh. You have to give them money, especially if you live in Philadelphia. But just in general, the Constitution and the laws, as interpreted by the highest court in the land, say that you personally owe bigots money. In a new, specific way that you weren't already paying for. Yeah, yeah exactly. This is a new one for you. Mm-hmm. So here's the story on this. In 2018, the city of Philadelphia stopped funding a group called Catholic Social Services, a.k.a. CSS, for refusing to place foster children in the homes of gay couples because, you know, they want kids to have homes and stuff, just not as much as they hate gay people. That's That's their policy. So Philadelphia <sighs> rightly stopped giving them public funds to do that yeah they provide homes for kids where there's a nurturing environment of cishet penis vagina sex in the master bedroom homeless kids really need that that's a really important important. thing for homeless kids (laughs) they have to check that box yeah so in response css said that they weren't actually violating the city's anti-discrimination clause because they would refer gay couples elsewhere which the city's attorney rightly pointed out was uh, bullshit, saying, quote, if one of the agencies had a sign saying no Baptists allowed, it would be cold comfort to those folks who say, oh, you could just go somewhere else. End quote. The attorney also pointed out that the exact same argument could be made to agencies that wanted to refuse service to interracial couples as well. Or, hey, yep. even just couples with different religions. Yeah. Or couples who might work on Saturday or uh, like their neighbor's yard better or have tri blend t shirts. Mm-hmm. There's everything. There's so many dumb things. Yeah. All those valid. So, as I said, the Supreme Court, the highest legal authority in our nation, thought long and hard about those arguments and ruled mm-hmm. base. I'm on base. No backsies. Really? You're on base? Just, okay, quick question about base. When we really? said no backsies. You, you might, okay. Yeah. You're the Supreme Court. Yep, we're the Supreme Court. So, yeah. 
as in the Masterpiece Cake Shop and other similar decisions since the court got filled with the bad guys from Handmaid's Tale, in one case literally, the Supreme Court ruled on behalf of theocracy on a technicality, saying that the Stupid. anti-discrimination laws of the city weren't applicable because, quote, Section 3.21 also permits exceptions to this requirement at the sole discretion of the commissioner. This inclusion of a mechanism for entirely discretionary exemptions renders the non-discrimination provision not generally applicable, end quote. Which, in my humble, uh, not legal expert opinion, translates roughly to circle, circle, dot, dot, now I have a bigot shot. <laughs> I'm on base, yeah. <laughs> They're saying that if you have a rule that allows case-by-case -case exceptions no, you don't. You don't have a rule. Yep. That's insane. <laughs> By that logic, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 doesn't count. Now, okay, I'm sure there's some bullshit nerd reason, law reason, whatever, about how it's different than that. But no, it's not. Just nope. basic no, logic not. that's crazy. Yeah. Also, Heath, don't give him ideas about the Civil Rights Act. <laughs> yeah, we, we might have to beat that just in yeah. case they're listening. <laughs> but it actually gets worse. So... Even though the Supreme Court ruled unanimously in favor of the bigots, the bigotier wing of the court wasn't happy because it only applied to this case and didn't permanently enshrine into law that gay people aren't people. Yeah, there's like an escalating series of concurrences mm -hmm. that are more and more bigoted to be like, this is OK. We, we said yes, but it should have been way more bigoted. This is bullshit. Yes, that really happened. And. They're saying that the exception clause that's decided by the commissioner would be unfairly targeting Catholic groups if some other group got that exception. But the whole issue is about bigotry and the rule targets bigots. Yep. If your thing got targeted, that's your fault because you're a bigot. It also targets atheist bigots theoretically too. And if your thing needed an exception to the anti-bigot law, no, 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 we shouldn't. Do, we should say no. We should not have those. <laughs> yep. So Philadelphia can just get rid of the exception and they'd have a functional anti bigot rule again. But that just sets up another Supreme Court case that would entirely overturn Employment Division versus Smith and pretty much cancel all church state separation. Mm -hmm. Just a reminder the champion of secular government who wrote the Smith opinion was Antonin Scalia. Mm. Our current Supreme Court has six, possibly seven people who think Antonin Scalia was too secular. <sighs> That's where we are. Yeah. So one of those people is fellow New Jerseyite Samuel Alino, who in his lengthy dissent said, quote, this decision might as well be written on the dissolving paper sold in magic shops. First of all, not a thing, Sammy. Stay in your fucking lane. <laughs> He continues, quote, okay. what is he what does he think's happening there? Like, All right. The paper is uh, dissolving into air and disappearing. <laughs> All right. Now, if you'll just take that piece of paper and place it in this bowl of water. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He continues. The city has been adamant about pressuring CSS to give in. And if the city wants to get around today's decision, it can simply eliminate the never used exemption power. If it does that, then voila, today's decision will vanish and the parties will be back where they started, end quote. So, good news. Thank you, Justice Alito. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I see the rule there. You have a rule that says non-slip shoes required for safety. But uh, that commissioner let in a guy with no feet. So now you have to pay for a barefoot neo-Nazi parade. That's the <sighs> law. That's the law now. Yep. You can start banning amputees if you want, but then we're going to have a Supreme Court case that sets up a cabinet department of neo-Nazi parades with a big budget. What the fuck is happening? Yeah. Yes. He continued, quote, today's decision will be of no help in other cases involving the exclusion of faith-based foster care and adoption agencies unless by some chance, the relevant laws contain the same glitch as the Philadelphia contractual provision, on which the majority's decision hangs. The decision will be even less significant in all the other important religious liberty cases that are bubbling up. 
After receiving more than 2,500 pages of briefing and after more than half a year of post-argument cogitation, the court has emitted a wisp of a decision that leaves religious liberty in a confused and vulnerable state. Disappeared your paper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Those who count on this court to stand up for the First Amendment have every right to be disappointed, as am I, end quote. Yeah, okay. Translation, dear bigot cities, make sure you put this little bigot glitch in your rules and you don't have to say the quiet part out loud like I am right now as a Supreme Court justice. Oh, you know what? Or don't. And we'll set up that Department of Neo-Nazi Parades. Either mm -hmm. way, enjoy. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Justice Alito and the rest of the Legion of Doom are mad that they can't rename the country Jesusvania this time. But just to be clear, it's not for lack of trying. And I can't emphasize this enough. They just haven't gotten to do that yet. But they are willing to write lengthy and heavily cited dissents about why they should be able to do that. So <sighs> keep an eye out for it. Or you should have voted for Hillary Clinton. Mm. And in... Eucharist control news. Fantastic. Keep that right. Fantastic. <laughs> the U.S. <laughs> the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops had their annual spring meeting last week, and their big accomplishment was voting to withhold magical crackers from Joe Biden for spite. That's what they did. <sighs> yep. That was their job last week. Apparently, everything else is going great for them. No internal problems <laughs> with Catholicism, really good HR team, just all around crushing it. So they decided to spend a bunch of time denying communion to any Catholics who don't agree with their anti-choice policy. Translation, AOC and Joe Biden are fucking up our whole Christian right thing. The Baptists are making fun of us. They're like, hey, D up, get your shit together, get your house together. So we are taking away the crackers from all the pro-choice politicians. <laughs> yeah, just think, Mark, think. If they took your cracker power seriously, they wouldn't be pro-choice. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing you got to remember about Catholic leadership. They're rapists. They're cowards. Okay. Yes, they're cowards <laughs> and also terrible at their jobs. So they failed at their own stupid spite thing. What actually happened is they voted in favor of eventually refusing crackers to Joe Biden. But, <laughs> but not even really that. They voted in favor of eventually drafting a document that would refuse the crack. Well, you know what? Still not really. They <laughs> voted in favor of eventually writing a strongly worded letter and actually a medium worded letter that says oh, we'd really appreciate it if our regional managers would follow a very loose guideline with no penalties about refusing crackers to anyone who doesn't believe in our anti-abortion stance, which does not even include Joe Biden, who is openly against abortion, but just not as a public policy. Yeah. And and they're not making their announcement about their letter, not letter about their policy, not policy until right before <laughs> midterms, you know, exactly as the yeah. Supreme Court is planning to overturn Roe versus Wade. So the timing on this is. Uh, yeah. So great job with the reverse virtue signaling, I guess. Vice signaling done here. <laughs> and seriously, I, I actually mean this great job alienating a big swath of Catholic people who support bodily autonomy for all the organs you might have. And those people are pretty much exactly the same ones who aren't going to panic about their continued access to cannibal magic going away. No, they will not. No, I can't imagine they would. It's <laughs> dumb. So now a whole bunch of liberal Catholics are like, no, please don't take our magical crackers. We love those so much. We're backing out of the room. You can't hear us anymore. And, <laughs> That's about 48% of the Catholic population in the U.S. that's pro-choice. Okay, but like, do you think there's one guy who's like, this is his line? He's like at home right now. And he's like, look, I can appreciate running an international rape cabal based on Nazi gold. That happens. But taking away people's crackers, that's a bridge too far. Okay, you're joking. But yes, you described some Catholics just now. That is. It must be. So... In response to the announcement from the Bishops' Conference, a group of 60 Catholic Democrats in the House got together and released a statement that it basically said, what are you, fucking five years old? That's fucking stupid. We don't even want the crackers. They're dumb. But don't weaponize the Eucharist, idiots. <sighs> and the bishops had a big meeting. It was about three and a half hours of their conference. And they responded, 
No, you're five. We keep it now. We keep the crackers. <laughs> yeah. Look, Demo Catholics, bring it in. I get what you're going for here, but appealing to the humanity of guys in dresses who canonically believe they're somewhere between men and literal angels, not going to work, people. Not going to work. No. Stop being Catholic. Just yep. Cut it out. That's cut the it solution. Out. Doing, you don't actually believe that stuff. Liar. You're a liar. <laughs> so now the conference of bishops is going to, uh, they're going to kill one piece of the body of Christ every five minutes until <laughs> Joe Biden stops killing a fetus every five minutes. I don't know. Uh, I guess we're at an impasse. Yeah, Good it's job, a weird guys. mass grave. It's a weird one. <laughs> <laughs> and in Silence of the Lambs news, for as long as we've been doing this show, we've been responding to the patently ludicrous claim that prayer has been banned from schools. Every time a football coach decides to prophetize to his team, every time a substitute teacher kicks a kid in the nuts for having two gay moms, Christians cry persecution and assure us that their thought magic has been driven out of schools like snakes before St. Patrick. And yeah, by the way, those examples were real that Eli just said that yep, those all, things happen. <laughs> yep. The football coach thing, the kicking a child thing. Yes. Yeah. And of course, all of that is bullshit. You can pray whenever you want in school. It's thinking. Heath could be praying right now for all I know. <laughs> what you're am not I? about. You don't know. Are you? you never know. Or am I not? <laughs> it's impossible to tell because it's useless, but you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't matter if he was. But what you're not allowed to do is force students to pray. Well, at least you weren't until this week when Florida, of course it was Florida, passed HB 529, which, and I'm not joking, forces all public schools in the state to have a moment of silence that lasts at least 60 seconds by law legally at the beginning of a school day. Great. Yeah, the public school system in Florida was crushing it. Now they have one less minute. Uh, this should go great. <laughs> and by the way, this um this fits right in with the new history curriculum. When they start talking about the redacted war, they can, you know, throw in the 60 seconds of silence yeah. right there. Put it Perfect. right there. Yeah, that's all of history class. It'll just be that 60 seconds. Fuck. Now, of course, the bill's sponsor, State Representative Randy Fine, who, fun fact, is neither, doesn't admit that this is so <laughs> schools can force students to pray. He says that, quote, I fundamentally believe that our kids have issues today, in part, because they don't have time for moments of reflection, end quote. Okay, well, that's Buddhism from Satan right there. You're a bad Christian, Randy <laughs> Fine. That's bad Christianity. You're letting Buddhism into schools now. Okay. But that quote actually gets worse. You see, he said that thing in reference to the mass shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School. What? So he thinks the mass shooters just needed 60 seconds of forced silence at the beginning of the school day. And, you know, it would have worked itself out in payroll. That would have fixed it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Maybe we can swaddle all the kids for a minute. Just like, all right, I'm going to murder some. Mm -hmm. This is cozy. This is nice. Hey, I mean, look, we're not trying gun control, so why not try a power swaddle? I'm just I, saying. I like it. It's, it's compressing me. It's nice. <laughs> now, other politicians were more honest about the bill with Republican presidential hopeful and man who always looks like he's just realized that, yes, he did, in fact, get hit in the balls. Governor Ron DeSantis <laughs> saying, quote, the idea that you could just push God out of every institution and be successful. I'm sorry. Our founding fathers did not believe in that. End quote. Okay, well, that's incorrect. But they think God is going to be up there in heaven being like, oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, that's great. You gave me 60 seconds of avant-garde music. I love this. This is a great <laughs> gift from Florida. Thank you. No more school shootings. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was doing school shootings before. But you know what? I might take a little time out on that. Probably not, but maybe. You won me back over. <laughs> thanks for that avant-garde music. So, yeah. That sucks, but it's also very clearly an invitation to any students out there in the state of Florida who listen to our podcast to ruin this <laughs> moment of silence. <laughs> Do you hear me? Ruin it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying a lot of stuff is silent. Maybe. That's true. Hey, maybe you institute 60 mandatory seconds of very intense, very erotic charades every day. You know, you know what? I don't want to give you ideas. I'll leave it up to you. I'm sure you'll think of something. I just want to send so many bags of, I don't know what the loudest chip is, but we need to send those to Florida. Soon as that 60 second starts, giant crunches all over the state of Florida. 
Well, I know how we're going to send those chips, and that's our <laughs> next sponsor this week. <laughs> Stamps.com. the best segue they've ever had. <laughs> Stamps.com, oh, you're welcome. You. Thank you. Hey, Eli, what, uh, what you doing there, buddy? Oh, hey, Heath. Sorry. Well, Good news. I found a buyer for my urine. Uh, bad news. The dude is all the okay. way in Germany. So I got to schlep all of this down to the post office. So, okay. But why trash bags? It's what it came in, man. This is the container. Okay. okay. I don't, I don't even want to know about the details, but Eli, if you want to save yourself some hassle with sending it, why don't you try stamps.com? What's stamps.com? Stamps.com brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS right to your computer. It's a must-have for any business. Whether you're a small office sending invoices, a side hustle Etsy shop sending out orders, or just navigating this hybrid work life, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. No wonder over 1 million businesses choose Stamps.com for their mailing and shipping. Wow, and I can do all that from home? That's right, you can. Just use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Once your mail is ready, just schedule a pickup or drop it off. It's that simple. Plus, with Stamps.com, you get discounts up to 40% off post office rates and up to 66% off UPS shipping rates. Not to mention, Stamps.com is a fraction of the cost of those expensive postage meters. All right, Heath, I'm sold, but where do I sign up? Stop wasting time going to the post office and just go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with our promo code scathing, you get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in scathing. That's stamps.com promo code scathing stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Yeah, because stamps.com is so easy. Yeah, that, and you brought them trash bags of urine. Sure, yeah. sure. Yep. And in birth of a donation news, we have a story about hate pastor Stephen Anderson. Yeah, we do. Hate congressman Louis Gohmert mm -hmm. and a very, very obvious lie about a donation. <laughs> Thanks to some great work by the Daily Beast, we learned last week that Anderson received a donation of $5,500 from Gomert at the end of 2020. This, of course, was a big surprise to literally nobody. Yep, Gomert nobody. is basically <laughs> just a, a hate pastor with a few extra big words and a few question marks to make his public statements. Technically not hate speech quite at the same level as Steven Anderson. But instead of just admitting that he gave money to a giant bigot, Gomert got himself wrapped up in a series of lies like me and Eli fighting over the chair on a Bowflex, and it is <laughs> fucking delightful. Oh, yeah, I was totally going to squat jack like 450, but then Heath and I just had to talk to the girl at the juice bar for an hour <laughs> instead, so yeah. Uh. <laughs> so, you might remember Steven Anderson. From that time, he called for the literal genocide of the entire LGBT community via firing squad. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, you might remember also... All those other times he did exactly that. Mm -hmm. And you might also remember him getting banned from 34 countries, <laughs> including some he's never even visited. If he gets within 10 miles of an airport, Tom Cruise gets hit in the head with a ski ball somewhere. And he has to go arrest this guy <laughs> for eventual hate crimes. And the only reason it's not more than 34 countries is that Anderson only speaks English. He's banned <laughs> from the vast majority of the English speaking world plus a few other countries, just in case he learns their language. They pre-banned him. Guys, he went to Taco Bell last week. We need to start banning him from some of the Spanish-speaking countries. We can't take this risk. <laughs> yeah, He also tried to sneak around his YouTube ban last year by starting a bunch of different channels and then like asking people in his church to upload his sermons instead of him. And YouTube really? was like, hey, man, you're an idiot. That's not how videos work. <laughs> ban, 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 ban. <laughs> That's amazing that he thought it would work. <laughs> yeah, the same hate speech video. Oh, for, oh, it's from a different IP address now. Cool, <laughs> yeah, great. Now, uh, you might also remember Louis Gohmert from, you know what, I'm going to save us some time here, from being a Republican congressman. That'll yep. cover mm -hmm. 
all the horrible shit. Also, he looks exactly like Dobby the house elf in live action. That's what <laughs> he, he looks like. Yeah. And here's the lie about the donation. According to Gomert, he hired a Christian singer named Steve Amerson, but accidentally <laughs> told the Federal Election Commission that he gave money to Steve Anderson. And, you know, those words are very similar. Just like the words fee and donation are very similar that he also mixed up. And just like all the words of the entire address in California versus all the words in the entire address in Arizona. Yeah. You know, all, all those buttons on the keyboard, they're right next to each other. It's very tricky to... <laughs> To, uh, Billy Gilmore's working with a weird keyboard, everybody. It's just got Steven Anderson <laughs> on one button and Steven Amerson on the other. Okay, but we, so rather than being a hateful bigot, he wants us to know that he's a, a hateful bigot and a liar, which That's I'm happened, pretty yes. sure is a crime when it comes to political donations. <laughs> sure is. But here's the thing. Even if Gomert really did mean to pay the singer Steve Amerson instead of make a donation to hate Pastor Steve Anderson. Steve Amerson, he's a piece of shit, too. He Not is. like Steve Anderson level, but still pretty awful. On Steve Amerson, the singer's website, he proudly mentions that he's worked with prosperity gospel preacher Bruce Wilkinson and serial sex criminal Ravi Zacharias. Yeah. Bottom line, if that money went to Steve Anderson... I, I don't know who it went to, but I, I'm, it, it did actually go to Steve Anderson. But if it meant uh, he maybe meant to go to the singer. Either way, if that went to Steve Anderson, Louis Gomert managed to find just about the only thing worse than donating money to himself by keeping his own money. It's almost impressive. Yep. I uh, Credit where credit's due. And in Bap to the Future news, as we reported extensively, Last week was the Southern Baptist Convention, and as well as affirming that racism isn't a problem and calling themselves pirates for a second, they elected Pastor <laughs> Ed Litton, who defeated the slightly more conservative Pastor Mike Stone by a mere 556 votes. And since this is how they react to everything now, conservative Christians are pretty sure George Soros and Hugo Savez snuck into the Southern Baptist Convention <laughs> and elected an ever so slightly less bigoted bigot. Yeah, okay, so you remember you remember in the office when Jim got Dwight to punch himself in the face with his phone by slowly adding nickels to the handset and then taking them all away? Remember that part? Yeah. Yeah, this is nothing like that. It's not It's not even <laughs> close to really, it's nothing yeah. like that at all. I just wanted to mention that story. This is just them standing in the parking lot punching themselves in the face saying, Yeah, it's a lot closer me. to that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the creator of this just asking Jewish questions moment is none other than MAGA activist, Christian sovereign nationalist, and this is my favorite, owner of James Lindsay's LLC. What? <laughs> yep. I'm guessing For he real? mostly works on the ninja axe fighting parts of the business. Michael That's a big o. Component. Yeah. Fallon, who tweeted, quote, just thought I would ask who was in charge of the counting process at the SBC? After all of the lies, slander, and mainstream media involvement, shouldn't this be in full public display, end quote? And then in a follow-up tweet, he said, quote, You can always tell that you've hit a hot wire with a reasonable question when you receive ridiculous answers from the progressives, end quote. Progressives? Yeah. Again, quick reminder, the progressives in question in that tweet are the Southern Baptist Convention. The SBC, exactly. Yeah, and by the way, the people in charge of counting the votes there are called the tellers. Mm -hmm. And they clearly did a blood ritual with hand cutting. Absolutely. There was robes and everything. <laughs> the chair of the tellers was a woman named Tina Bosch who said, quote, may our conversation, fellowship and ministry together reflect the character of Christ and his love for the world. And his had a capital H there. She's the communist Jewish mole on the inside that this guy thinks is <laughs> messing with their votes. Yep. So, yeah, we do know who was in charge of counting the ballots. It was that crazy lady. And also, I should point out, literally nobody sane has any problem with this election, right? Even the loser, Mike Stone, congratulated his opponent on a race well run. But 
this is just a thing that right wing Christians do now because they want their participation trophy to say that the other guy probably cheated. D- democracy was in their eyes. It doesn't count. Yep. And finally tonight in Flag Day news. Who the fuck cares about Flag Day? It's <laughs> stupid. We've had a holiday for a cloth rectangle since 1916. And we just now got Juneteenth as an official holiday in 2021. Anyone who makes a big deal about Flag Day belongs on a goddamn watch list. Mm -hmm. Almost guaranteed they own a Confederate one, too. It's fucking creepy. (laughs) And in other news, Ted Cruz celebrated Flag Day last week. There he is. He sent out a tweet with a video of himself pledging allegiance to a flag in an empty room like a fucking lunatic. And he wrote, this didn't used to be controversial. Hashtag Flag Day. Okay, here's the thing. If my body looked like Ted Cruz's, and honestly, it, it kind of does, I would post as few <laughs> side view cell phone videos of me in an ill-fitting suit on the internet <laughs> as possible. I mean, it's it's unrelated to the stupid thing he did. It just needed to be said. It needs to be said, Ted. Yeah, you know what I don't do is put a lot of videos of uh, under my neck view stuff. <laughs> yep, I don't do that a lot. Under boob shots? No, nope, that's not a thing I do. No. Got to go to our OnlyFans for that. (laughs) So first of all, it's never a good sign when you're doing a protest against the nobody. Never good. Nope. Here's the sequence of events. It starts with nobody talking to Ted Cruz. Mm -hmm. Long silence. Yes, the fuck I am allowed to salute the flag. You're controversial. (laughs) And then his whole office was like, Dude, what the fuck are you doing? Did you just get Tom sawyer by complete silence somehow? <laughs> and yes, he did. Yes, he did. Then he made one of his aides film this sad little skit declaring allegiance to God and some fabric. Definitely with multiple takes and notes and like a whole thing. That was somebody's job that day. Okay, but to be fair, Heath, it was somebody's job who chose to work for Ted Cruz. So I'm kind of for it. I'm okay with it. Yeah, some asshole at like a junior Federalist Society club at his college. Yeah, fuck you. I'm glad you had to film Ted Cruz. And I know he's just pandering to Christian people in Texas, but even among that group, one other thing, who the fuck is searching the hashtag for Flag Day? That's insane. What's happening in your life? You're clicking on a hashtag for flag day to celebrate that's another great way to build a watch list by the way check on everyone who searches that hashtag yep but Mm -hmm. here's the big takeaway and i think there's a fun project built into this i'm thinking we can trick him into doing more stuff right if ted cruz thinks anything got canceled by the left he'll do that in a video for spite so i don't know get creative we got to come up with something Ooh, hey hey ted Liberals are very against suicide. We have a lot of hotlines. Okay. Lots yeah, come on. Just don't. <laughs> Something with, we hate when you dive into a pool of marbles. Kill yourself. Like Scrooge <laughs> McDuck. They're soft. You can totally swim around in them. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to close out the headline. Seriously, Heath Bucks and Eli Bucks, if you figure out good ones. Mm-hmm. All right. And wrap it up. Eli, exclaim. Uh, Felix was a power bottom. <laughs> And when we come back, we're going to talk about some liars and we're going to rate their lying on a shit based log scale, I guess. But first, a word from our final sponsor, Allbirds. Woo! That's the last of them. Oh, hey, Eli. So, where have you been? Oh, hey, Heath. I just dropped off all the urine I sold this afternoon. Okay, great. Yeah. So you ready to do the Allbirds ad? (laughs) Am I? Okay. Okay. Before we start, are you certain you know what that product is? Yes, Heath. I know what this product is. It's obvious. Is it to you? Yes. Look, I, I got this. I got this. Okay. Hey, podcast listener. Have you ever seen a bird and thought, God, I wish I owned that bird? Well, now there's all. Nope. 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 This is why I asked. They are shoes. Allbirds does shoes. They do shoes? Yeah, and nice shoes. They're made from sustainable, natural materials that feel light on your feet and are better for the planet. Plus, 
the tree runners are breathable, machine washable, and made with responsibly sourced eucalyptus tree fiber. That does sound good. So like no birds. Mm -hmm. They won't even sell you one bird, let alone all of them. No, they will not. Nope, not even one bird. That's unrelated entirely. But their simple and (sighs) versatile design for their, again, shoes, it makes the tree runner shoe a perfect shoe for any outfit. They sent me a pair, and they've become my go-to walking around shoe. I actually really like them. Really? Really. Really, really, really do. So keep things light and breezy with the Allbirds Tree Runner. Discover your perfect pair at allbirds.com today. That's A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S dot com. Okay. Um, you got to make uh, another phone call? I do. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. You going to come out of your room with a garbage bag full of dead birds? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I am. There it is. Obviously, our focus here on The Scathing Atheist is presenting the wrongheadedness and dangerousness of religious thinking. But it's important to remember that you don't need religion to have wrongheaded and dangerous thinking, which is why we also take time out here and there for a segment we call How Bullshit Is It? So tell us, Heath, what load of lunacy will we be learning about this time? Did you see I... Did the alliteration thing good? You yeah, see yeah, you did. You did. The L's. Yep. It's because Noah wrote it for me. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Got what's it. the bullshit? <laughs> All right. So <laughs> today we're going to talk about Curlian photography. Okay. So what is Curlian photography? It's a way of ruining a photographic plate. But if you're gullible enough, it's a way of taking pictures of people's auras. Okay. Uh, pin in that for a moment. Where does the story of <laughs> Curlian photography start, Heath? It starts in 1939 when Soviet inventor Semyon Curlian accidentally discovered that if an object on a photographic plate is connected to a high voltage source, it produces a really cool looking image on the plate. And this is very much a real thing that goes by a lot of different terms. Electrography, Corona discharge photography and gas discharge visualization, to name a few. But all of those names are a little too descriptive of the actual somewhat mundane process. So when it's employed for wooey nonsense, you're going to hear vague terminology like Curlian photography or Curlianography. Okay. So it sounds like we need to answer two questions, Gary Heath. What's really going on? And more importantly, what does naturalgreenmommy.com think is going on? <laughs> yeah, the first one, the answer to that is just boring, sciencey stuff. When electricity enters into something moist, like, say, a living thing, it ionizes gas around the object. That makes the air around the object conductive, and it leads to a coronal discharge. So what you see on the photographic plate is that discharge. Ooh, I didn't realize we were going to get sexy. No, we're not. It's not sexy. Well, then I don't know what you just said. Okay, either way, the point is, (laughs) it's definitely not psychic auras. It's not that. Okay, so I think I've gotten a hint here, but uh, what does naturalgreenmommy.com think it is? Psychic auras. So why do they think that? They're stupid. They're stupid people. Oh, sorry. Why do they think that in a way that fills the C segment of our podcast? Probably a better way to put it. (laughs) Yeah, got it. So for that, we have to thank Thelma Moss. She wrote a couple books that claimed the official explanation about ionized gases doesn't count for whatever reason. And what was really being captured was a picture of an aura. Okay. Uh, Why did anybody believe her, I guess? Because the 70s. Oh, that'll do it. Yeah, the 70s will do it. This was the height of the New Age movement. And even academia dipped their toes in the color-infused mood water. Despite parapsychology being the study of bullshit stuff, they had a department for that at UCLA. (laughs) So when Moss published her 1979 book, The Body Electric, claiming that she could photograph auras and use them as both a diagnostic tool and a (sighs) portal to the astral plane. Yeah, that's my girl. (laughs) With all the authority of a professor from a respected institution And the 70s were way too high to argue with that. 
<sighs> you know how boring people like to say, like, oh, my gosh, I was born in the wrong decade. That's how I feel about conning sure. people out of money. I was born in the wrong decade <laughs> for conning people out of money. It's too hard now. Yeah, it got harder, at least. So Moss was an interesting character, as one would expect from a professor at UCLA who published books about how to take pictures of an aura. <laughs> she came to academia in middle age. She was a big fan of LSD and probably had some genius revelations about real science stuff based on all that LSD. And eventually, <laughs> she managed to become a professor at UCLA's Neuropsychiatric Institute, where she studied nonsense like auras and levitation and ghosts. Like, okay, for wait, real, she did that. Sorry, sorry. UCLA had a ghost department team? <laughs> yes, they did. Yes, they did. <laughs> but to their credit, it was an unfunded, unsanctioned division of the Neuropsychiatric Institute. And it was mostly staffed with volunteers. I'm, I'm sorry, mostly? Mostly, yeah, not, not giving them too much credit. But ultimately, Moss would write two entire books about the powers of Curlian photography. And in order to fill that many pages with, it's totally not just ionized gas, it's something else. <laughs> she had to photograph a lot of this stuff. And apparently one of her favorite things to photograph was Uri Geller. Ooh. A charlatan liar that Eli's other profession will never live down, even if David Blaine cured cancer. Okay, first of all, he ate rope on Twitter the other day. David is doing his best. What? Secondly, he really, his I don't know what. eating rope? I just want to be clear, this is what you said? It's not a trick. He's just eating rope on Twitter. Everyone can see it. And secondly, <laughs> secondly, <laughs> just to be clear, it's entirely woo, right? Well, it's actually worse than that. It's Meta woo. It's woo of woo. Building on the work of Moss, a lot of parapsychologists started using curly in photography to quote, validate the existence of other shit they were studying. <laughs> People were using curly in photography on patients undergoing acupuncture or who claimed to be telepathic and presenting changes in their so called auras as proof that something magical was happening. Okay. So wait. They were electrocuting people who said they were psychic because I'm starting to like this idea more. Okay. Here. You're winning me back. <laughs> well, generally, they run a current through the photographic plate itself and then have the subject touch it. But I don't think they have to use a high enough voltage to shock the person, actually. Okay, but you could. I mean, I mean, yeah, you could theoretically. Yes. OK, but if what they're actually taking pictures of are Crayola discharges or whatever the fuck they're called, Close. shouldn't they yeah, yeah. always be the same? Like, if they're not actually taking pictures of auras, <laughs> shouldn't the Curlian photography of telepaths and muggles always look the same? <laughs> no, just the normal variability from one person to another, from the composition of the air in the room, and from how hard they press against the photographic plate can actually make a difference. So, according to Wikipedia, quote, Corona discharges can interact with minute variations in the different layers of dye used in the film, resulting in a wide variety of colors depending on the local intensity of the discharge, end quote. Okay, so for the sake of argument, how do we know they're not taking pictures of auras? Oh, because auras do not exist. Oh, no, <laughs> bad phrasing. That's on me. That's on me. But if we're talking to people who believe in auras and they say auras are a thing and they believe that they have pictures of them, they're not going to buy that explanation. So how can we prove to those people that they're not taking pictures of horrors? Okay. Yeah, no, good question. And it turns out to have a really easy answer. So the official explanation is that we're actually seeing pictures of electricity being carried by ionized gas. To test that, all you have to do is remove the gas. And when you try to take a curly and photograph in a vacuum with no gas, you get nothing. That makes perfect sense if it's actually based on a gas discharge. But I couldn't find any parapsychologists explaining why auras would disappear in a vacuum. Yeah. So, I mean, how do parapsychologists counter that? Oh, they do it by changing the subject to the torn leaf experiment. That way you've cited a scientific study and they've now cited a scientific study. So you're tied again. Now it's a tie. Oh, uh, is that how that works? No, it is not how it works, but that's how they do it. <laughs> okay, fair, fair. So putting aside my excellent idea for electrocuting psychics in a vacuum, <laughs> what is the torn leaf experiment? All right, well, according to proponents of the aura theory, 
It's proof that Curlian photography can photograph the auras of phantom limbs. Mm. Here's how it works. First, you take a freshly picked leaf, you set it on a photographic plate, and then you take a Curlian photograph with it. Then you tear a piece of that leaf off, place it back on the same plate in the same position, and take a second photograph. And sometimes, but <laughs> but not always, you'll get a faint image of the missing part of the leaf as well. All right, pretty convincing. But uh, what if you put it on a different photographic plate? Then you do not get an image of the missing part. Okay, what if you thoroughly clean the photographic plate between the two pictures? You do not get an image of the missing part. What if you place the torn leaf slightly askew or on a different part of I'm the gonna plate? I'm going to stop you right here. You don't get an image of the missing part if you change pretty much anything. Okay, so very obviously what they're getting is an image of the residue left over from the last time they set down the leaf, yeah. right? Or you're getting a picture of a very finicky phantom aura. One <laughs> yeah. or the other. A shy one, if you will. So it feels <laughs> weird to ask this, but... I can be- are there any legitimate uses for curly in photography? Ah, uh, uh, the pictures look kind of cool. Uh, apparently, David Bowie's 1997 album Earthling used some curly in photographs he took before and after doing a whole bunch of cocaine in 1975. Sure. So, yeah, somebody got to have a coke party with Bowie. That's a <laughs> that's a good use of. Curly and photography, yeah, good use right? of an afternoon. Yeah. So is this just historical woo or is this like, is curly in photography still a thing? Well, when I Googled it, the first suggestion was curly in photography app. <laughs> so, Ouch. I know what that means. All right. So I guess the only question left to ask is how bullshit is it? All right. I'd say it's. The steam from the steaming pile of shit is actually a psychic shit aura level of bullshit. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you, Heath. And we promise that next time we do this segment, Noah will do the science questions again. So I get to go back (laughs) to doing japes. Yeah, got to have japes. Right? Jape the shit out of Noah. uh, You want to do a jape right now? I heard it. Nope, I heard it. Anyway, that's all the blasphemy we've got for you tonight. We'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptocrat, debuting 7 a.m. Eastern Time on Monday. An even newer episode of our sister show's hot friend, God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday. And an even newer, newer episode of our half-sister show, Citation Needed, debuting on noon Eastern on Wednesday. You can also listen to Heath slowly drive me insane under the guise of playing Dungeons and Dragons the first Friday after the first Wednesday of every month at 7 a.m. over on our sister's daughter's boyfriend's show, D&D Minus. Of course, I'd be ungrateful if I didn't thank Heath for steering the ship while the captain's below. I'd be unhinged if I didn't thank No Illusions for continuing to write for and edit our show while he's recovering from oral surgery. Gives a whole new meaning to some people just can't catch a break. And of course, I want to thank Don Ford, voice of fantasy and adventure, for being so awesome last week. I was stunned into silence till just now and forgot to thank him. But most of all, I need to thank this week's new patrons, many of whom have waited three weeks now to be thanked. So if you think about it, waiting one more with genitals that stupendous, not a big deal. Together, these money givers gave us money that we need to spend to live to not to die. You can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad free version of every episode. Or you can make a one time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at Scathing Atheist. Dot com. And if you'd like to help, but you swore never to support a Smash 64 player, you can tell your friends about the show or give us a five-star review all the places you can get a podcast, or you can fuck us. I mean, legally. I'm just saying you're allowed to fuck us as a thank you for enjoying the podcast. I bet Noah's glad he's back next week. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson handles our social media and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music used in this episode, which was used with his permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com.
wait, wait. Bags of urine. This is a, a weird job for Tiffany or whoever. <laughs> Getting weirder every day. Guys, all right, she's flipping through. We didn't we didn't technically say no bag of urine. They stuff. said no bag of urine. They, if they had said it, we wouldn't have done it. It's on them. We got to get really specific with this one contract, guys. <laughs> all right. One more time. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.